Thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Glenn, for that warm welcome. I'm probably um, a bit a bit strange here at this conference because I'm not going to talk to you about any type of technology. What I am going to talk to you, though, about is what I think, and I hope you will agree with me, is the national project which is just about to start, which is just fundamentally about common sense. Um, and I, I um, hope by the end of um, my 20 minutes, and I'm going to have to talk very quickly, you'll, you'll agree with me. So as Glenn said, um, I'm, I'm a nurse. I'm a chief nurse. Um, I've been nursing for over 30 years now. Um, it's what I do, it's what I believe in, and I'm passionate about it. And just a little background to why I got involved in this. About five years ago, I was asked by the Royal College of Nursing. Um, they needed a token nurse to sit on the NHS supply chain customer board. What's that, I said. Don't know, but we need a nurse. Can you go? Okay. <laughs> because it was in Birmingham and I was working in Birmingham at the time. I did go and I sat there for about a year, thank God the meetings were only quarterly, because I didn't have a clue what they were talking about. It was all directors of finance, directors of procurement, talking about logistics and stuff. Um, but what suddenly started to become very real for me was when the financial challenge began to bite. And as you all know, um, it's now absolutely significant. And I started to think by some of the facts and figures that were being thrown about at the customer board. Nurses and midwives use a lot of stuff. We use a lot of stuff. Not always kit, and by that I mean, uh, you know, gadgets and electrical stuff. I'm talking about dressings, pulp products, gloves, all of those things that nurses use, particularly when they're delivering basic nursing care. So I went back to my own trust, which at the time was Heart of England uh, in Birmingham, <coughs> and uh, spoke to my head of procurement. I said, if we were just to standardise all of the stuff that we use as nurses and midwives, how much would we save? And well, that's all very well, Mandy, but we're always trying to standardise clinical stuff. You lot just won't get together and make a decision. That's why it's always so hard. OK, point taken. If just the nurses do it, let's take the doctors out of it for a moment. If just the nurses did it and we made a decision as the most senior nurses in the trust, how much would it save? Cut long story short, we saved £780,000 in a year. That wiped out my nursing CIP. The, doc, the director of finance didn't care where my nursing CIP came from, just as long as it came from somewhere. And suddenly, wow, we'd saved all this money, we'd standardised products, things like disposable curtains, things like and simple anti-embolism stockings, things like very simple standardisation of dressing packs, and it hadn't hurt a bit. So I started to talk about this more to, to my colleagues, and um, this is where this idea was born. So that's just a little bit of a background for you. OK, you don't need to be told about the situation that we're in. But for me, when I'm talking to my nursing and midwifery colleagues, the thing they understand is that for every £30,000 we save, that is one band five nurse. So we talk on this project in the currency of nurses because that's what's engaged everybody. Not going to go into this, you, you, you probably all know this inside out, but I think the final bullet point is very pertinent to the project that I'm going to talk to you about, and that's about having a single national co catalogue um, for trusts. OK, so these are the figures when we spoke to supply chain that we could save if we standardised these three really common areas or products um, of practice in a year. 776 band five nurses. It's probably the equivalent of seven or eight wards worth just by standardising products. And that's where this project started to take off. And that's where you see these little icons a lot um, on wards, particularly in acute hospitals at the moment, because it's a currency clinical staff understand. The customer board um, has been, as I said, this was what I was um, asked to sit on, and, and this is the rogues gallery, 
um, at the moment uh, of who sits on it. We're now divided into regions and my clinical reference board. And <coughs> the customer board is changing. There was recently a, a press release, some of you may have seen, to see that it's moving away from supply chain itself because supply chain provided the secretariat, etc. Because there is a real move now towards independence from the, from the, the company that actually hold the contract, if you like. I was asked to set up a clinical reference board, and this is what Glenn was alluding to, that I call my coven, 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 large group of witches, basically. Um, and the reason we could, these are formidable nurses. Um, these are some of the chief nurses from some of the largest trusts in the country, and the reason they've all joined this board is because they passionately believe in what we are doing, what I have just described, because every single one of them is being asked to make efficiency savings in their nursing budget. What we would so much rather do is make efficiency savings elsewhere. We also know, as <coughs> chief nurses, and because usually we deal with governance, safety and risk, that the more we standardise, the safer it is for patients. Now, we're only starting this project with the simple things like dressings, continence products, etc. But if I give you an example that every single trust I've worked in, we've had a patient fatality when a clinician has not known how to use the right bit of kit. Okay, usually eye meds, infusion pumps, etc. We now have such a mobile clinical workforce that are moving around all of the time, the more standardisation we get the better. So some of you from trusts may recognise some of these people, but what's really key for me is the diversity we've got there. So we've got chief nurses from mental health trusts and a recent um, addition of Sandy Brown, who's, at, who's the director of nursing of an ambulance trust. Because do you know what happens when you have chest pain at home? And the paramedics come and they put the electrodes on your chest to do an ECG. And they say, there's something not right here, so we're going to take you to A&E. They take you to A&E, you come in, you're put on a trolley, and the first thing the nurses do is take those electrics, electrodes off and put ours on. Because we don't standardise the electrodes that the ambulance trust use and the local acute trusts. It's shocking, isn't it, when you think about it? Those electrodes have probably been on 5, 10, 15 minutes. Since Sandy joined a group, raised this with us all, every single one of those chief nurses in control of their own NHS A&Es have said, that's a load of rubbish, we're all going to standardise, and we are. It's as simple as that. It's taken years and hours of conversations to not make that happen before we've just made it happen. So our objective is about raising the awareness of the role that clinicians play, pay, play um, when it comes to choosing and procuring the best value clinical products, identify areas for savings and standardisation, and all of those other things. And as um, Glenn said, we've been very fortunate that the GS1 team have used us as a bit of a sounding board um, on a few occasions. Um, and um, I think, Glenn, you'll agree, we are, if nothing, if not blunt and honest, and um, Glenn has asked me to share this with you because it is the actual, absolute unequivocal view of the nurses on this board that we would love our NHS staff to be barcoded. And I know there's been a lot of controversy about that, but for me, as a chief nurse of Nottingham University Hospitals, where we have 14,000 staff, and I have nearly 6,000 nurses, I do not know right now how many nurses I've got on duty without ringing round 97 wards and 42 departments. It's not exactly 21st century healthcare, is it? And then I don't know what grade they are, what band they are, without this absolutely torturous process. If all of our staff logged in when they turned up for duty, we would have that at our fingertips. I recently had a nurse at um, QMC, our Queen's Medical Centre site. Anybody ever been to QMC? It's got 27 miles of corridors. 27 miles. One of our nurses went on her break recently at night and collapsed. We couldn't find her. She just didn't come back. 
And in the morning, we just, we, we had people looking everywhere. We didn't know she'd left the building. We eventually found her in a toilet on a corridor. Um, so there are lots and lots of reasons why we think this is a good idea. But public health warning. If this is going to be used as a e-rostering type, logging in, knowing how many hours staff work, please, please don't be surprised to find that that may bite you on the bum. Because what we do know is that many, many of our staff work far longer and far more hours that they're, than they're contracted for and paid for. So that may have an unpleasant surprise. OK, what we have just done... And we have been very fortunate that the Department of Health has funded a national clinical evaluation team. And this is a group of jobbing clinical nurse specialists in the areas of tissue viability, continence, infection control and clinical procurement who have been brought together and seconded from their own NHS organisations to look at the standardisation of the most common products that nurses use so that we have got a national specification that we can go out and procure nationally on. Why do we want to do that? I'll give you some examples in a minute. That's their remit. They started two weeks ago. So they're all still keen, bushy-eyed, bright-eyed, and they are um, having their induction at the moment and having gone through the Department of Health recruitment process. Um, that was quite a challenge. So the other thing that we're going to be looking at is trying to rationalise the number of clinical products on the NHS supply chain catalogue. Because again, I'm going to show you some figures at the moment that, that are truly mind-blowing. Small changes, big differences. And again, those are, there are those little nurses. Um, lots of controversy because they've got hats on, but at least you know what they are, don't you, immediately when you see them was a joint um, campaign that I led with the Royal College of Nursing, trying to raise awareness with nurses about how they can get involved in procuring clinical items to get, A, the best item, and our procurement departments then can have agreement and go out and get the best cost. We did a survey, a national survey. The Nursing Times did it for us. <coughs> And we, we targeted directors of nursing, chief nurses, and also nurses actually in practice about their views on did, would nurses get involved in something that historically we've just not been involved in because there is an opportunity of £58 million worth of savings if, as a profession, we all agreed on the same clinical products and items. So this was our, um, our survey and interestingly it's the middle bit which says, those of you may not be able to see it, 79% of nurses said the biggest barrier to getting involved in the purchase of clinical supplies was lack of time, knowledge, support or that they're not allowed to. Um, and that is what we are actively seeking to address at the moment. And again, some of you will recognise some of the products that have come out of this. The traffic lights that are now in clinical rooms, um, where it's very, very obvious visually what is the most e expensive product that will have a red traffic light. What is the best value product because it will have a green traffic light. Do you really need to use the most expensive one? And... The whole of the, 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 this project, um, there, there is a website and lots and lots of tools that people can use and download on how to get started in case studies. Now, what gets hearts and minds in this, apart from the fact that, um, yes, we're going to make savings, is the benefits of standardisation on patient care. And... I've been at Nottingham now for a year, um, so I cannot take um, the glory for this project. This, this project was led by one of our clinical procurement matrons, David Newton, and I think it's just a brilliant example of the benefits um, for cost, but also for patients when you standardise. So catheter-associated UTIs, very, very common in hospitals, very distressing for patients, particularly the elderly, elderly and one of 
um, the significant reasons for confusion. Okay, so <coughs> our aim was to standardise the urinary, urinary catheters used across our two acute sites because people were using different ones with no standardised practice. That's what they would have gone and got before, going into the clinical room, one of those, one of those, one of those. What we developed was a pack, a sealed aseptic pack, which is just on the rack. When you open it, it's got everything you need in it based on best evidence. But the thing that is really important is, last year, we saw a 55% reduction in catheter-acquired infections <coughs> since the standardisation of this pack. Estimated savings just by putting everything together and standardising the catheter, £111,000 on an £890 million budget. You might think, so what? What we haven't been able to do is to quantify the other savings, recruit, uh, reduce length of stay, because those patients haven't got a UTI, reduce falls because, because of their UTI, they've not been confused and wondering and fallen. But for me, that is the essence of what we're talking about. So this, just, just to, uh, I'm mindful of the time, <coughs> come to the end and to also the controversial part of this project has been about supporting change in wound care okay nurses themselves going back to our survey think that we can make significant savings in those areas the top one is dressings okay so key facts 302 million pounds a year spent on dressings and wound care 43% through supply chain. Some products are already generic, i.e. cotton wool, but there are huge price differences between the most, least, most and least expensive products. Our nurses and doctors tell us some of the products we have, actually, they're a little bit too sophisticated for their use. We don't really need, need that level of sophistication. There's the issues about pricing, depending on um, your director and your procurement team and how good they are at negotiating price. And there is no national specification for some of these products. And many of you who, who work in NH Trust will be aware that for years we've been beavering away at local formularies, primarily for wound care. All over the country, they've got a brilliant one in Bristol. They've got a brilliant one in Newcastle. Nobody's brought all of that work together and come up with a national one that we can all use in order to procure on a scale that's never been seen before because we're all procuring on behalf, the same product on behalf of the whole NHS. And it is thought there is the potential for £18 million pounds worth of savings. That's approximately 20 wards. The funding for 20 wards could be saved with this standardisation. I'm not going to show that because that's, that, that's a video. So what we've done to date, before Christmas, supply chain pulled together 30 experienced tissue viability nurses um, across those areas to look at those very common elements of wound care. I think it would be fair to say uh, that this backfired a little bit. Many of you uh, in procurement will have been aware of some of the media and the pushback from the industry. I think we've learnt from that and as a result of that, that is why this national team has been established and we're using a strap line, a bit corny I know, but it, it's, it's, it is what it is and that is that this is for the NHS by the NHS. We are totally independent now of supply chain. All of these nurses coming up with these specifications have been seconded from NHS trusts, and I think that's really, really important. This is the thing that scared me when I saw it, and I think, you know, this, if there isn't a reason for doing this, then there never will be. For example, did you know there were 374 types of film dressings that you can order in the catalogue? 374. It is shocking. 
and it is not necessary because in 99% of cases, a common film dressing is just what it should be, and that is to cover a cannula or, or, an, or a line, um, and it would be very easy to come up with a national specification for it. But at the moment, you can choose from 374 different ones. If you look at foam dressings, 470 to choose from currently in the catalogue. Again, it's slightly crazy. So these are, are what we've been reviewing. So next steps, the team are now established and we're starting the work on reviewing the work that's already been done by the team before Christmas. We're also working with our key stakeholders and starting to get the message out there. And can I say that thank you to, to all of my colleagues because the call to arms on the whole of the profession and NHS trusts getting behind this project has been absolutely amazing. And we are going to kick off uh, the evaluation of the most common wound care products over the summer so that we can then go back to our procurement teams and the DOH and say that the perfect specification for a very simple film dressing is this. The other thing that's also really important, because I would not have got involved with this if I thought it was otherwise, this is not about getting the, the cheapest product. The savings come in the volume of procurement that we can do on the right product on behalf of the whole NHS. It is pointless to choose a cheap product that doesn't work so you use two or three of them. It is pointless to have a film dressing that doesn't stick properly so you put another one over it or you're changing it all of the time. It is pointless to have a pulp product going all nursey on you now like a bedpan that leaks because what do nurses do? They get three and stack them one inside of the other just to make sure it doesn't leak. So there, your cost savings gone. The whole ethos of this product is to have the best quality, best evidence base, the savings come in the volume of procurement that we can do. And we think it's the right thing to do. It's our contribution to this horrendous challenge that we're all facing across the whole of the NHS. And if standardising and putting in place the right clinically evidence products for patients can save that many million pounds and that many nursing posts, then I really believe it's the right thing to do. So, beyond wound care, we've got <coughs> six months initial secondment for the team. We are part of the NHS and will work with the NHS to conduct the clinical evaluations. We're also going to be working with procurement professionals at Supply Chain and the, and the NHS Business Services Authority. And those are the methods that we're going to use when we're evaluating these products. Thank you. <laughs>